Hey, today we're going to talk about truth tables, section 2.1. You should have a copy of some printed notes to go along this with this lesson. So let's get started. Today our objective is to be able to complete truth tables using negation, conjunction, and disjunctions. First thing we've got to do is establish our baseline. A statement is a sentence that either has a value that's true or your statement is false. This is called the truth value of your statement. Statements can be represented by letters. So very often we will represent statements using the letters P and Q. These are not the only letters we can use, but they are the primary letters that we use for this unit. Example, we might have a statement P. Statement P might say supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. The truth value of this statement is true. We learned in unit one that supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. When we take the opposite of a statement, we call that the negation. And a negation will have the opposite truth value of the original statement. A negation is shown by the symbol not, and it's just a little curly Q, kind of like the curly Q that we put above the congruent sign. If we take our previous statement, supplementary angles have a sum of 180, and make not P, that would read supplementary angles do not have a sum of 180 degrees. Since the original statement was true, when we take the opposite of true, my new statement will be false. Compound statements. Compound statements are two or more statements joined by the words and, or, or. A conjunction is a statement joined by the word and. The symbol for and is an upside down V. Looks like this. And a conjunction is true when both statements are true. For example, if you have a statement that's true and you connect that with another statement that's true, the conjunction would be true. If any of the statements are false, your conjunction will be false. A disjunction is a statement joined by the word or. The symbol for or is a regular looking V, read P or Q. And it's true when at least one of the statements is true. Therefore, if you have a statement that is false, like true or false, that would be a true statement. So if we look at the following three statements, P, there are seven days in a week, that is true. Q, March has 30 days, is false because March actually has 31 days. And R, Halloween is on October 31st. So if we're going to write these statements out, P and Q, and determine the truth value, then we need to write these in sentence form. So you will start out by writing sentence P. There are seven days in a week. When we look at the conjunction, or we look at the symbol, the symbol is a right side or an upside down V, which represents the word and. So we're going to connect this with the word and, and then statement Q, March has 30 days. When we think about the truth value of these statements, there are seven days in a week is true. We're connecting that with the conjunction and, and March has 30 days, which is false. So if we have a statement that's true and false, the overall truth value is going to be false because we have to have two true statements in order for a conjunction to be true. If we go on to example two, it's not Q. So March does not have 31 days, okay? Which is actually a true statement because March doesn't have 30 days, it has 31 days. We connect that with or, so we now have a conjunction. So now we're looking at true or, I'm sorry, a disjunction, true or. And if we look at our next statement, we have R, Halloween is on October 31st. 
and Halloween is on October 31st, so now we have true or false. When using the disjunction or, if one of the statements is true and one of the statements is false, the overall truth value is true. I want you to take a minute and I want you to try to do number three on your own. All right, welcome back. If we look at statement P, statement P says there are seven days in a week, which is true. And we're gonna connect that with the conjunction and, so we have an upside down V. And then we're gonna have not R. Halloween is not on October 31st, and that is a false statement. When we have true and false, the truth value of that is going to be false. When we have a conjunction, both statements have to be true in order for the conjunction to be true. So this leads us to truth tables. And truth tables are a great way to organize your data. Um, they get pretty hairy. If you keep on going, there can be some pretty big ones. So you have to know your rules really well. So just to establish a baseline of the rules. If our original statement P is true and we take the opposite of P, the opposite of P is going to be represented by a false statement. If I have a false statement on the other hand, and I take the opposite of a false statement, I'm going to get a true statement. Conjunctions, and remember a conjunction is when we use the word and. So if I have a conjunction and I have true and true, my overall statement's going to be true. However, if any of the statements are false, my conjunction is going to be false. So true and false will be false. False and true will be false. And false and false will also be false. Disjunctions, if you recall, are connected by the word or. So if I have true or true, I'm going to have a true statement. With a disjunction, if you have true or false, this is also going to be true. False or true will be true, and false or false will be false. All right, let's see how we can apply this. So if we have the statement in example one, we're going to have P or not R. So the two statements I'm dealing with are P and R. So if I think of the possible truth values for P, I have four options for P and R. We could have true and true. We could have true and false. We could have false and true, or we could have false and false. If you look here, this statement says not R. So I'm gonna come over here in the third column and I'm gonna take the opposite of R. So if I look right here, I have a true. The opposite of true is false. Here, the opposite of false is true. The opposite of true is false, and the opposite of false is true. So now, when I think of the actual statement P or Q connected by the disjunction, or P or not R, I really don't need this column, so I am going to eliminate it. I am looking for the disjunction P or not R. So if I have true or false, this is gonna give me an overall value of true. True or true is true. False or false will be false. And false or true will also be true. And this is based on the information on the previous slide. All right, I want you to try example two. I'm gonna get you started with your column headings and then I want you to hit pause and take a moment to work through this. So if I look at my two letters I'm dealing with, I have P and I have not P and then I have Q. So if you think of P and Q, you're gonna have true and true, true, false, false, true or false, false. So now I want you to take not P and I want you to figure out the overall truth value of not P and Q. So hit pause and take a moment and work through this problem. All right, welcome back. If we take not P, the opposite of true is false. 
The opposite of true is false. The opposite of false is true. And the opposite of false is true. So now, I don't need P anymore. So for me, I'm going to get rid of P. So I have not P and Q. Remember, in order for the conjunction and to be true, both statements have to be true. So if I look at this particular problem, the only statement with true and true would be this one, which automatically means that the rest of the statements are going to be false. All right, now that we've mastered small truth tables, let's look at a big truth table. All right, so right now we have P, we have Q, and we have R. So we need to think of all the possible truth values that we could be dealing with here. So I know that I could have true, true, true. I could have two trues and a false. I could have true, false, true, or I could have false, true, true. Now, take a moment and think of some combinations with two falses and one true. So, if I have two falses, I could have false, false, true. I could have false, true, false. Or I could have true, false, false. And then if we think of the case where maybe I have all three of my statements are false, I could have false, false, false. Okay, so that's the options for P, Q, and R. There's no other combination of trues and falses that I could possibly have. So now I'm gonna come in and if I look at my original statement, I need not P and I need not R. So I'm gonna start with not P and I'm going to take the opposite of everything in column one. So I'm going to look over here at column one, and I'm going to take the opposite of all these values. Okay, so I took all the opposite values of column P, and since there's no P left in my statement, I'm pretty much going to get rid of the values in column one. So now I also need not R. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take not R. That's not an R. There you go, R. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take the opposite of all the values in column R. All right, I'm done with all the values in column R, so I'm just gonna get rid of those. I do not need those anymore. So they're, they're done. All right, so if I look at my original statement, now I'm going to break it down. I'm going to have the statement that says not P or Q. So I want you to take a minute and I want you to use the column not P which is this column right here, and this column here, which is Q, and I want you to fill those values in. All right, welcome back. I'm going to fill this column in. So if you have true or, actually the only time that this is false is when you have false or false. So if I look at these two columns, when I have false or false, Right here on the third row, I have false or false, which is going to be false. And then again, on the next to the last row, I have false or false. Otherwise, if there's any trues, then that statement is automatically going to be true when you're dealing with the disjunction or. All right, so now I'm going to look at my statement, and my final statement has me taking not P or Q and not R. Oh, and I do that a lot. I take my upside down, dot, upside down B and turn that into an A. This symbol should really look like this. I just don't really know how to erase. Okay, so now I'm going to be taking two columns. I'm going to be taking this column here that I created along with column not R. So not R is this column right here. And I'm going to be combining those with a conjunction and. So if you think about the conjunction and, 
and is only true when both statements are true. So if I look at these two columns and I pinpoint when both statements are true, both statements are true here, both statements are true here, and both statements are true here. So if I have true and true, this is going to give me a true. If I have true and true, I got a true and true and true again, it's still going to give me a true. When using a conjunction, if you have any false values at all, it automatically makes the final answer false. So if I look down here, the rest of these are going to be filled in with a false because at least one of my statements is false.